Hey, how you doing, Cardinal? We're gonna talk Cardinals today. Cardinal, 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 Cardinal. Who doesn't like the Cardinals? They're everywhere and we just love them, baby. We're gonna talk some Cardinals. Ah, the Cardinal. That's our favorite. Hey, how you doing? Bob Vokes here for the Gilly Galoo. Talking Cardinals today. We saw we got all kinds of Cardinals in the shop. All kinds of Cardinal songs as well. They sing and sing and sing and sing. <laughs> I really kind of wanted to talk about the Cardinals in the sense of uh, how to attract them to your yard. And even last night, I was actually I was at a, uh, a speaking engagement I had at a, a, a local club here that I do. I do a, a fair bit of speaking different places and some schools, some seniors residences and some photography clubs and horticultural societies and stuff. We talk about habitat and a lot of different things and I'm always approached about how do you uh, attract a cardinal. It's our bird obviously, it's on a lot of our things and as I was showing you there it's in a variety of different stuff here in the store. So how do you attract them? The biggest thing as, as with anything, and as we say all the time, it's habitat. Habitat is, is key to, to everything. Um, but with the cardinal, their habitat is that they're a low level bird. They're not a high level bird. They don't nest high up. They just, they nest, they live in the thickets and the cedar hedges. They love thick cedar hedges. They're becoming more urban as, uh, all the time in my view. They're a bird that was not necessarily uh, native to here either. So they've historically moved into uh, Eastern Ontario and Eastern Canada and all of Canada for that matter and stuff. But they've, they've, uh, they're, so that they're a very in the, in the thickets, in the, in the low level areas and they're a ground feeding bird. Uh, so they're most comfortable on the ground and probably part of that is because of their bright red nature. Because uh, as I always say to, uh, to folks in the, I said, if you were that color, and particularly in winter, would you expose yourself? <laughs> so it's, a, it's very key then that you experiment with location um, of your feeder so that you can uh, have success. And, and try it every couple of weeks, you know, particularly move it around and, and go through around your yard until you find the spot that's very convenient and, and, and comfortable for the cardinal. As we often do, we place our feeders where we want them so we can see the birds from our kitchen sink or our dining room table or the living room couch or wherever it's uh, convenient for us. But perhaps the bird doesn't think the same, uh, has the same feeling, particularly with the cardinal. They're very shy, they're very elusive, they like to stay under, underneath the, the comfortable areas and things. So by a ground feeder, and I wanted to just talk about that quickly here, so a, a beautiful feeder like this, this is a fantastic feeder, uh, very durable and very, very high quality, but see the narrow little perch here. Cardinal's not gonna use that. Historically, the, I mean, it may be periodic that they, somebody would have it and that they would go to it, but this, for your success rate to go up, this is not the type of feeder that you wanna have for a cardinal. Um, we have a variety of different feeders that cater to the Cardinal. Our Squirrel Buster product as an example. This is called the Cardinal Ring. There's one right there. <laughs> it's, it's very, uh, it's designed to accommodate them so that they go to the feeder. Um, it's, they call the, the, our good folks at Brome Bird Care call this the Cardinal Ring. Um, this is the Squirrel Buster product. It's very, very popular. So the Cardinal can sit here and eat toward the food. Um, it's very, very effective. The other uh, thing then, oh, it's over here. It, and you've seen me hold this feeder up before. This big red barn fly-through feeder is amazing for cardinals. Has a full mesh bottom. There's a mounting plate there you can see that we can put a, a bracket on it that we have with our pole system here. So there's the flange. We mount that on the bottom of this feeder. Mount that up on the top of the pole system with the squirrel baffle. Like so, and you're in business. I have two of these in my yard, and anybody that watches any of our other stuff on social media, you've seen my red barn that's on my pole system in the yard. 
Cardinals are in there all the time. So you have to experiment with location, have a feeder that's appropriate for them, and then we get into the food. Uh, just one other little feeder that we're going to show here. I have this tray as well. This is a four-way catch, it's called. Uh, it also has a hole down through the center here with this mounting plate, and you can mount that midway on the pole as well. So if you want to have a multiple arm on the top, you can put this on the pole. It will work as a catch, but it also works as a feeding platform. Very, very effective. No problems with snow and ice and everything else because it has a full mesh bottom. You have to clean it. And if you look at some of the other videos there, I've shown you uh, the way I've cleaned those mesh with the brush and what have you. So all of our seat blends will accommodate uh, the Cardinal. Everything that we have here has food that is going to accommodate the Cardinal. We also do have a specific blend that is our Cardinal blend. And this is a black oil sunflower seed safflower mixture. Um, chickadees and nuthatches and, and stuff will also eat the safflower. A lot of people uh, feed that as a deterrent uh, for some of the not so attractive birds, but this also works very, very, very well. So as we're coming into winter here now, we're, we're looking at, uh, the, you know, we're mid-September. And uh, so it's a great time to kind of get your yard set up so that you can start to accommodate the cardinal and get them accustomed to coming to your, to your feeder. And then if you happen to start with a heated water bowl and what have you, that the, they'll have water access uh, for, throughout the winter as well. And then if your yard contains the habitat that's conducive to the cardinal as well, then you're in business. You're gonna end up with the cardinal around your yard, particularly if you hear them. And when I, um, anybody that, that uh, hears them, I mean, the, the, the song of the Cardinal is, is very prolific and it's, <laughs> here we are mid-September and, and there's nothing better than late winter, very early spring, than you start to hear the male. <whistles> saying, hey honey, I'm over here because they start very, very early. They're considered an early nester. But one of the things I wanted to talk about that's a quite unique uh, about the Cardinal, I'm just gonna show you this. So, of course, the male, the female, of course, uh, immature female, and then the male. So I wanted to show you this picture here, if I get that light shining out of it, to talk about a couple of different things that's the, the, the with the cardinal that they're very, very very unique the female sings equally as much and equally as well as the male as in some species the female doesn't sing but certainly in the in the cardinal they do and we have this song and i want you to listen um, this is a pair of cardinals singing and it's the female first and the male second have a look and then i'm going to discuss a little bit of something about that Female, male, female, male. So they're very prolific singers. And the thing I wanted to talk about in in the the, the both birds with their lungs. Just let me grab a pen here so I can. So at the, where their lungs come up into their throat and into their vocal cords up in, up in here, um, in their top of the lungs right here, if you can envision sort of two uh, orifices coming up, up in there, they have um, a mechanism, like a flap if you like, uh, in, in the, the, those two ventricles that come up into their throat. And the unique part about it is that they can make noise with either or both. So they can sing with either uh, ventricle and make uh, a song together, or they can sing independently. And this one song here is, has been dis discovered that the start of, the, of this one uh, song is the left side, and then the finish is the right side. So as you hear it here, I'm gonna play it for you. As you hear it, you'll hear it, it's, it goes along, and then at the end, it's a sharper, uh, trill. So take a listen and see if you can hear the difference and we'll I'll kind of try to help you along there. Hear that at the end? So
So that's been discovered that that particular call and other calls as well that the Cardinal uses are that they're using both ventricles of their lung uh, where they have this uh, flap for lack of a better word. I know the actual name, but that just escapes me at the moment. I'm getting old, you know, you kind of get to lose track of things. <laughs> but it's a real cool feature that they have this particular vocal cord the, in, in both sides as it coming off their lung and coming up to their throat. And they can make songs and sing uh, out of both of those particular ports. So have a particular type of feeder that is accommodating to the, to the cardinal. So something that simulates them standing on the ground and eating uh, straight forward, a non-perch type feeder. So a hopper style feeder, a fly-through feeder like I was showing you. Throughout the winter, if you have uh, food available, that uh, excuse me, water available, that will accommodate them even more so because they, they need the water to help with digestion. Um, it helps keep them warmer because they're hydrated. Um, they don't have to travel as far to be able to get water so they don't expend that energy. And then a good quality uh, blend, like our Seasons Woodland that I use at home, is a fantastic blend for the, the Cardinals and they just love it. And then, um, the, then the proper type of feeder that accommodates them that's flat, whether it's a squirrel buster or a, a fly-through feeder or some kind of a tray feeder or whatever, that, that'll work great. And you can have the cardinal all year round. Don't be, be afraid to experiment with location where you put your feeder and see which one works the best for our little red buddy. Have yourself a great day. Thanks for stopping by.